Okay, so now we're going to switch to popcorn, which is a uh, fun kind of informal way to have a quick conversation between all of you. First of all, congratulations, all of you on um, winning these awards and really pushing the envelope of what's possible, particularly in the time of COVID. Uh, so I think what's common across all these themes is that you've had to design not only in a situation where you may not understand the subject or the user here you you know you may try to put on a blindfold but you can't possibly understand what it would be like to never have seen a triangle for example but also you've had to do that in really creative ways using um technology that people might not have done so in the past that's changed how it how you can research and innovate so i'm going to start with mandy uh mandy what is the one thing that you've learned from doing this kind of work during a pandemic where we're reliant on tools that you hope will stick with um, the way that we design and innovate for the margins going forward? Yeah, um, so I think for me, um, I think a lot of us said it at first, the uh, barrier, one of the barriers was just being able to connect with people from our target audience. Um, but now with COVID, you know, and immersed in this world of video call, it's actually so easy to be able to um, connect with those people. So. I think it's really important to speak with your user group early on so you can really understand um, the problem from their perspective, um, empathize with them, and yeah, actually know um, kind of what direction you have to go into um, while you're designing. So I, I hope this ongoing communication, whether in person or on video call, um, is something that continues. And now you're going to popcorn it to someone, so you have to pick right, it. So I will popcorn over to Casey. Hi. Um, so I think one thing that was nice about being able to connect with everyone virtually. Um, so our team, when we were working on this project, we were all students and um, we were actually in different locations. So in different parts of Ontario and I was in BC, but we were still able to connect with each other and, and have meetings. And I just think it's nice to be able to connect people from like further areas. And I hope that that's something that can continue. And I'll popcorn it over to Michael. Um, okay, so I think the biggest uh, takeaway and thing that we've learned from Side by Side is that um, we want people to not make decisions on behalf of people with indivi uh, individuals with disabilities. Um, and get direct consultation from them rather than just making uh, assumptions on their behalf. We learned so much through just trial and error and speaking directly to, to, the, to the population, um, whether it was Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, uh, intellectual motor um, impairments. Um, speaking with them directly and learning from them directly is um, the best way to tackle these problems rather than making assumptions for them. Um, and I'll uh, popcorn it off to uh, Lillian. Okay. So, uh, uh, so during this pandemic, uh, like uh, me and a friend, like friend, also like to uh, communicate. Uh, not only like the like this kind of like meeting chat with camera. We also tried some like VR tools. And like each each people like person can have an avatar and to. Like uh, talk together like the real world, and that is really fine. I want that to be continued. So I would popcorn to Liana. Hi. Um, so I think doing this project in the pandemic um, between Mandy and I, a lot of our work was graphic, and a lot of it had to be done over softwares like Figma. And we had to find ways that we could show each other concepts really quickly and generate things really quickly. But, you know, you had to do it so that people could see it live. And that was also something that, like, in the future in user testing, I think that could be really, really useful in just having, you know, we're all in design. We do a lot of, like, co-design sessions where you can give your participants something and have them manipulate it. And that was sort of taken away from us 
in COVID, but it can also with these softwares that, you know, if you just practice that and you learn how to set up for other people, you can really get valuable feedback from not only just listening to them, but also having them manipulate things on the screen. And like other people were saying, COVID kind of opened up, you know, the barriers of like just being restricted to people in your specific location. So now you can access people on other sides of the world and not only talk to them, but with software, you can have them do things for you and, you know, make them your guinea pigs in a sense. Um, so I will popcorn it off to Tiffany. Yeah, I think um, my biggest takeaway from this project and like others were mentioning from doing it within COVID was uh, because we weren't able to do user testing was um, we had to test our product on ourselves and to be able to, you know, try and simulate what their experience and try to empathize um, what they go through every day. I think that's the biggest takeaway that I've taken from this project is just trying to have uh, the empathy and trying to understand from their situation and um, working with our team to try and develop a device that would help them, you know, do things that are meaningful to them um, and something that we take for granted every day. Um, and I'm gonna popcorn to Aki. Uh, yeah, I think there were a lot of good points made already, um, but definitely one thing that I have to say is that I hope that we continue to consult with people with disabilities, uh, consult them individually when it comes to these ideas that we have, just because it's important that we get all of their input because every disability is very different. Um, and I just hope that we continue doing online programming and things like that to remove these barriers that people with disabilities face. And I will popcorn it to Mitali because she's the only person left. <laughs> um, I would say sort of a more practical learning for me was um, don't make assumptions about technology that works for individuals with uh, blind and partially who are blind and partially sighted um a lot of video conferencing tools that have you know articles saying that they're accessible and they work great so i think my biggest learning lesson was just asking you know what works for you what assistive technologies are you using um and let's set up accordingly i think i would say that Awesome. And uh, I like the circle gets a square kind of Hollywood squares format that we've got going here. Uh, well, thank you all so much for sharing those stories with us. Uh, I think we covered a lot of topics in a short amount of time. Uh, congratulations to all of you for working on this stuff. Obviously, um, one of the things that's really different from government and the private sector is that in the private sector, we tend to design a product for a lucrative target market that's homogeneous, whereas government is able to design for the margins and the uh, things that are heterogeneous, as you said, no two disabilities are different, uh, are, are the same, but but the nature of not being part of the default population is something that that has in common. And so uh, thank you all so much for uh, sharing some of those stories and shedding some light on uh, the many ways that you've been pushing forward on inclusion and accessibility, uh, and frankly, innovating that stuff. It's great to see the stuff uh, being built by the next generation of Canadian entrepreneurs. And I love that you're coming here with perspectives from design thinking to software engineering to occupational therapy, because this is really uh, how these changes are going to get made. So congratulations to all of you, and uh, thank you so much for being here today.